Hi, I'm Jim from Easy Tankless, and this is Jesse, our master plumber. We've done the ultimate install here on our Ultra model. This is operating on a well system as well, and this well system had not been upgraded or worked on since it was installed in 1979. So we did some updates, and Jesse and I will explain some of the things involved in this installation. So, Jesse, what's the first thing we did when we were looking at this well system? We were checking, what was it, the pressure tank? First thing we did was observe that the pressure tank was causing the pump to kick on and off more frequently than needed. So we went ahead and updated the pressure tank and actually relocated it into a different room to give us more space here to work with. I think that's the most commonly neglected thing on a well system, isn't it? Yes, the, the pressure tank is a non-mechanical device that would sit in the corner of a basement or where your water comes in from the outside well. Um, this particular device is designed to hold water pressure in your home and keep the pump from surging on and off. A pressure tank has a, a rubber bladder in the middle and, and that has air pressure above it and that's pressing down on the water that's in the lower part of the tank and that's holding a consistent pressure on your your household or business water system in between the cycles of the pump isn't that correct yes and that that over time that rubber it rots and and then water gets through that rubber and, and you end up the whole tank is full of water and it, it the rubber is no longer pressing that's simply why it fails isn't that yes with good quality water coming out of the ground, you can get 15 years out of a pressure tank. And often these tanks are, are in the system at the very beginning, previous to where the water softener is or anything like that. So it's common that the water that goes in the tank is not treated, isn't that correct? Yes, the water that will go into the bladder tank will not be treated because the tank receives and delivers water. It's hard to filter water that is being pushed and pulled so when when you look at one of these tanks and you're trying to determine whether or not it's bad I know there's a, a Schrader valve on top like on a bicycle inner tube and that can actually have pressure you can check it with a gauge but the the tank can still be bad isn't that correct correct there, there could be a minimal amount of pressure when using a tire gauge to check the bladder but this doesn't mean that the bladder is working correctly and and so, how do you check one of these tanks? You were telling me that you can actually just tap on the side of it with a small hammer and, and you can tell by the sound. This is the pressure tank that we purchased from our local Menards. I'll take the handle of the hammer and I'll tap in here at the top and at the bottom. The bottom has the water, the top has the air. Now, if this tank was bad, this sound would be up here as well. And that's what burns up a lot of the well pumps is that they're, the pump is working too hard all the time, turning on and off rapidly or, or staying on for long periods because the tank doesn't hold pressure on the system. Correct. The pipe coming from the well out of the ground, we cleaned it all up, we put a new pressure switch in at a 40-60 split, 40 being a low end, 60 being a high end, we put in new gauges to read our pressure from the old pipe we started with a dielectric union three quarter inch to convert from galvanized to copper and why is it that you put a dielectric union that's what's that called uh, electrolysis where you have dissimilar metals that causes them to corrode correct the the copper and the galvanized will cause this fuzzy looking appearance which eventually leads to a leak and you said we, we changed the switch to a 4060. I think it was a 2040. Um, what's that referred to? That, that's the pounds per square inch of pressure? Correct. So now we have a 40 PSI, 60 PSI, and, and 40 is when the well pump turns on. And 60 is when the well kicks off. So your maximum pressure will be 60 PSI. So what's this piece right here? After we converted our plumbing, we put in what is called a check valve. This is a one-way valve that only allows the water to flow a certain way. This will also reduce any 
of the well when it shuts off the water running backwards or um, any surging in the plumbing. This valve isolates our heater and it also helps us when changing our inline filter. Since we are on a well, we, would, we want to filter the water before it goes into our unit. And as we've explained in our other videos, that's really important because tankless heaters don't have the ability to hold sediment inside like a, a tank heater can. And so what do we have here? What's this device? This device regulates the pressure to our unit. We set it at the lowest setting that our well is. We install another gauge here so you can see that no matter, even when we're at 60 PSI, throughout the whole building here we're we're at the low end and we and we do that because we want the heater to have a consistent pressure water pressure going into it then when water the hot water faucet is turned on and the heater senses that and the heater ignites and begins to function it's not chasing a rising and falling water pressure which is caused by this cycling of the well pump a word about regulating the pressure on a well system. In this application in a business we have the water heater with the regulator directly to the heater. The reason is that in the back workshop they have a garden hose and a pressure washer and they wanted that 60 psi back there for that pressure washing. And as there's no shower or living space in this business there's only hand washing and so they wash their hands and they get their hot water strictly off the hot side. They don't blend cold water in to the hot water faucet. So the, the regulator is on the heater. We are only regulating the pressure on the hot side. If it's for a whole home use and you want the shower to have a consistent pressure, you need to regulate the whole house and that would just simply mean that the regulator was placed earlier in the system previous to where it splits off to hot and cold. The reason for this is that when you're in the shower as your well pump kicks off and on you want your pressure to go up and down equally so that when you have hot and cold blended together in the shower even though the pressure is rising and falling you have no change in temperature the problem with that when you're using a tankless heater is when that pressure rises and falls that heater is chasing that difference so there is a fluctuation in temperature on the hot side as the heater is trying to catch up or trying to react to the fact that then the pump switches off and then the pressure begins to drop again so you need both sides regulated on a well system if you want to have a consistent temperature in the shower. This works perfect in this business because if they want hotter water they just simply go up to the unit here and they just raise the temperature by pushing the temperature button. So what are these things right here? These are the isolating valves for when you want to shut down water to the unit for cleaning purposes. And uh, commonly referred to also as service valves, we have some ports on the side that actually connect to garden hose and then you use a submersible pump and, and white vinegar and periodically you can flush out the heater to clean it internally. And because all the fittings on pipe always turn to the right, at the point where it reaches the heater you need to use a union is it isn't that correct yes the valves all have unions on each end of it it's always a good idea i think on any type of piping that whether it's copper or iron or galvanized to have unions occasionally because you don't have to unscrew each segment to get back to that place that you want to work on, isn't that correct? Correct. We have unions on each end of the water filter in case something happens with this water filter in the future. Um, you know, Ten years from now we might want to change it or we might find something that has a better micron or has a longer life. Um, we can pull this filter out and change it. So there's basically two really important things for well users for tankless water heaters. Uh, and that would be consistent pressure 
and clean water. So it's that simple. If you want to use a tankless water heater on a well system, the well system needs to be operating correctly before you even think about installing the tankless heater. Thank you for watching our video.